Hello. I was out here earlier. I just finished up the other video. But I figured I'd come out and work on the plate carrier and the hub and everything. And get. I'm that close to getting one of the plates on this thing. Might as well go for it. So I'm out here. I got some new stuff for the shop and I got this filing cabinet here, which is pretty nice. I'll fill it up with tools and stuff. This will be a, all the jigs and fixtures I use on the shaper. Sandpaper and baggies for when I'm working on stuff. Um, I also got this one here for holding the bigger materials and stuff. Oops. All the jigs and everything for real big jigs for the shaper for now. And the bottom drawer has um, spring steel and everything else in it to keep everything organized. As soon as I get a little more cleaned up with the dividing head, I'll rearrange a lot of this stuff and put it into separate cabinets so it's all good to go. But, yeah. I'll get this started and got everything already put in the mandrels. I flipped the jaws already, so. Yeah, I hate doing that because I had to clean everything out. I had to clean all the grass dust and everything out of it, so it had to be not only torn all apart and cleaned, but yeah. Oh yeah, enough complaining. Let's get to machining. See how it fits. Take it off, cut this off, and then split it so that it's then it 
clamps down tight on that spindle. So, but before we do that, it has to be drilled in three spots for the plates to go on. Start machining those up. I honestly think that this piece has to be one of the worst design pieces there is because there's only held with one screw. Last pass it kind of like too much of a cut. It's not held very lightly so evidently it's designed just for gingeries. Lathe only unless you really take light passes. It actually looks like it's halfway in center on that side, but the uh, thing was faced off going like this because the thing jumped on me and it shifted, so it just looks funky. But it's right side there. The way this works, this gets split along here and then a bolt put in there to clamp it tight onto the spindle here. Now there will be three holes drilled exactly, which will match this piece also. You can see how it's it'll have three holes also exactly the same place. And the holes board on this one, the plates, I got some dings in it, so but it's way over thickness, so it doesn't matter. I machine goes out. Anyways, you bore this exact same hole here in all the plates. And with the three holes. And it mounts right onto here. And it clamps solid. This is just an arbor to machine it up and everything. So what I'll probably do is take these, chuck them up in the lathe, and face them off, and put the holes in this, transfer it to these, and use that, these to transfer it to this, or this to this. Use this kind of as a master, and turn everything on this shaft here, or on this mandrel here. The way Gingery had it done up in the book, he had you facing these off with just this held with one screw. So you can imagine how flimsy that is. Not pretty. 
nice tight fit. There's no play at all, but a nice sliding fit. Get all the blanks here the same exact way, and yep. Okay, I just been sitting down here messing with this. I measured it from the center point out, just on one of the plates. I faced both sides off and measured the bore here and just did up the math to find the ring that I needed which if you take set it about seven eighths just to hear it over and then do it two steps it will it was coming out at the right spot must have shifted on me. It's hard to do this sitting down out of the, out of the way of the camera. No wonder it's goofed up. It's on the wrong mark. I'll drill these out for a quarter inch and countersink them. Move the table up a little bit. There we go. off to get it to start. That way it goes right into the divot where you want it. perfectly spaced holes. I'll countersink these and get it, just hit it with some sandpaper to get rid of the marks, but it looks good. Okay, I got it. All the holes drilled and everything and tapped how it's supposed to be. Extra taps. Um, had something in the hole, but it's all set up for machining the outside of the plate and drilling. It'll go right on the front of the dividing head for holding these and the way this works it's supposed to be split right here and when it's drilled right through you can cut this off the book says you can but it says you can cut it off or you can leave it go. It's good for odd count holes I still gotta find the countersink or countersunk holes, the bolts that I have, which I can't find them. So I may have to grab some more. This gets threaded, and yeah. Yes, I know it needs to be taken off a little bit. But, move my helmet out of the way. This handle right here goes on here, 
and holds this pin that goes down into the holes all along this. So, I'm going to call it here for the night. It's I made some good progress, so yeah, I'm going to call it. I don't know how far it's supposed to be back. I'll have to read up on it, but there's the dividing head starting to come together. I'll do up the other two discs. I want to machine all the discs all together so they're all exactly the same size and everything, and I'll make a box to hold this thing too when it's finished. Uh, the Attachments are done. This is a lathe dog driver. There's a there's a plate. There gets two screws here and then a plate that holds onto the lathe dog that comes out for doing between centers. So that's that. It has the plate on it so it, it won't let any backlash in it. Okay, I think I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. See ya. Damn it.